What's happening, Ben? Hey, Bob. How you doing, man? Good, man. How you doing? I'm good. Where are you at right now? I'm in Atlanta, Georgia. How's everything in Atlanta? Is it hot? Like it's hot here? Yeah, it is hot. It's like, uh, it's about 86 degrees to be exact that's, when I looked earlier. That's what we got here. What are you doing, it? Cool. What are you doing in Atlanta? I'll, I came for Tony Levis' convention here. Um, I, uh, um, I was supposed to be here the whole weekend and I, um, and then I got Rolling Stones tickets in Chicago <laughs> and I looked at my phone calendar, which everything's in there, I thought, and, uh, I'm like, okay, cool. May 31st, I got nothing going that weekend. So I bought these tickets and it was like almost 900 bucks for two tickets, you know? Whoa. And, uh, and then, and then I'm like, oh, fuck, man, it's the weekend of Atlanta. So, so I, uh. So I'm like, shit. So I talked to Tony. I'm like, dude, you mind if it comes Saturday? <laughs> right on. He's like, yeah, man. How was this? So I saw this. Drove to Chicago from Detroit. My buddy drove. We saw the Stones. And then Saturday morning, I flew here. Got here at like 4 o'clock yesterday afternoon. And now I, I got to go to the airport at like 3.45. So I'm here like 24 hours exactly. God damn. And I gotta fly out, so yeah, it's kind of nutty. But how do you? Uh, so I didn't work. How do you handle? How do you handle all that traveling? I don't know, man. I'm tired. <laughs> <laughs> What's your secret? Uh, Patron. Drink lots of coffee and lots of tequila. Right on. So where's your next destination, Boston? Yeah, I gotta fly to Newark tonight, and then I'm, I'm gonna be there tomorrow, and I got, I'm, I'm gonna drive to Boston. Tomorrow night, Monday night. So I'll be there, and then I'm kind of all over the place. I'm going to Toronto this month. Um, the end of the month, I'm going to Europe. So I'm going to France, Amsterdam, and maybe Germany. Damn. I, it's uh, it's gonna be a crazy six weeks. So, and then mid mid July, I'll be home for two months. I hope. <laughs> you hope. I'm going. To, I'm going to, when I get back from Europe, July 9th or 10th, and then I'm going down to Cincinnati like a few days later. And then after that, I'm home. So I can. So. Enjoy some of the summer at home, you know. You're coming in for the Worldwide Tattoo Conference, yes? Yeah. What's uh? Yeah, I'm stoked. What's what are you gonna be doing there? Uh, oh, thanks. Um, if that's a cold beer. Uh, I'm totally jealous right now. Uh, it's a hot coffee. Fuck. <laughs> All right. It's still more. It's morning for me. I just got up at 1 p.m. So <laughs> this is totally morning for me. <laughs> Uh, but no, this uh, Worldwide Tattoo Conference, it's, um, it's awesome. I did it once in Chicago in uh, two days of just like school, you know, it's um, the six seminars. Um, so six of us each do a two hour seminar. So the first day is three of us. I think I'm on the first, I am on the first day. Yep. Let me shut this off. Um, so we each, we each do a two hour seminar and then at the end there's a discussion panel with all six artists on both days. Uh, it's an awesome thing. I had a blast last time. Like I learned a lot last time. Like you know, I've taken all these seminars myself too, and uh, it's just like it's a lot of uh, information to, to soak in over two days. And, you know, it's um, it's really really cool experience. What's your seminar all about? Mine's just on pretty much just what I do. You know, black and gray. Um, it, it focuses on portraits and photorealism because that's kind of my main thing. Um, but I also love doing you know horror custom horror imagery and freehand stuff sometimes and which is kind of a lot different than realistic work. It's a nice uh, a nice change, you know. I love I could do portraits every day for the rest of my life and, and not get sick of them. But it's also fun to just draw on somebody and uh and just uh, have fun, you know, creating some monster or something. Um, I'm a huge horror fan so I love doing that stuff. Uh, but my seminar so it's I'll talk about just my technique and just how I do stuff and um you know everything to do with how I tattoo, and, and but like I said, it's a little more based on doing a black and gray portrait because that's my main thing. So for, for some it's folks who aren't familiar with you, which I'm sure there are only a few, but uh, you started tattooing a little bit later uh, in life. You had a regular day job for years. Uh, how did you get into tattooing? Who uh, who got you into it? Um, you know, as I'd wanted to get a tattoo since I was like 19. And I had this buddy who joined the Marines, and every time he came home, he had more work. And he was getting, his arms were getting pretty heavily covered. And, um, you know, I thought it was the coolest thing in the world. I was like, man, I want to get tattooed. And uh, throughout my 20s, I would go into every couple of years, I might go looking at, you know, 
go into a shop and look around. And I was going into the worst shops, you know. All my friends had bad tattoos <laughs> on the side of town I lived on. They're like, go see this guy, Red. You know, he's 70 years old, but he, he shakes. But when he touches your skin, he gets dead. You know, those kind of people that people are, like, referring me to. You know? Oh, man, nice friends. And uh, I went in his shop. Yeah. <laughs> and I, got, it, I was pretty ignorant about the whole thing. I thought you had to, you know, pick something off the wall. I didn't realize people were doing custom imagery or you could bring in, you know, like an album cover or something. And I just thought you had to go in there and pick something off the wall if they didn't have it, you know. So I looked around and I didn't see anything I wanted, you know. And then uh, I was a month shy of turning 30 and I'm like I gotta get tattooed before I turn 30 I waited long enough I went in the closest shop to my house and um, I got Eddie from Iron Maiden on my arm and uh, Classic. it was horrible the guy, the guy butchered it you know, it was horrible <laughs> <laughs> um, but I was still stoked to have a tattoo you know and then I found somebody a little better and started getting my work on both my upper arms and at that point I started buying tattoo magazines and um <clears throat> I'm like, oh, my God, you know, I, I didn't realize what kind of work was being done out there in the world. And I saw an article on Paul Booth, one of those first magazines, and it's like, that's exactly the kind of work I'm looking for. Paul was, uh, he was, he was tattooing like four or five years at that point, but he was just getting big at that point. And uh, it's like, that's exactly the kind of stuff I want. And I, so I booked an appointment with Paul and got a full back piece, was, and that was like my first real tattoo. So that's, um, but I... You know, for 15 years, I had a job making kitchen countertops, and uh, and I played in bands all through my 20s. That's I wanted to, you know, make it in the music business or whatever was my goal for a long time, and that didn't go anywhere. You know, I did that for 15 years, and um, and after I, I quit drawing when I started playing guitar when I was 14, so like I didn't draw at all from like, you know, except for high school art class or something, from 15 years old to about th you know 30, but I got my first tattoo that kind of made me um want to start drawing again like I, i'm like i'm gonna <laughs> try drawing some skulls and stuff you know and then i just totally got uh, fell in love with with drawing again you know and uh so i was you know drawing skulls and stuff like that and then i took a basic drawing one art class um at the community college you know so i was going like two nights a week and and i learned that that I just learned the basics again, you know, like how light falls on objects and real simple stuff like that, perspective. But I learned a shitload in that one class, and it totally got me back into drawing. And uh, I took a basic drawing two class, and then I took a life drawing class after that, and uh, just because I was having fun taking art classes. You know? So I took those three classes, and uh, I spent about three years getting my drawing back together and thinking about tattooing the whole time, but I was kind of scared, you know, like, you know, what if I fuck somebody up, what if I stick myself and catch something, or, um, so I wasn't, like, totally set, but, like, so just thinking, man, I, would, I wouldn't mind learning how to tattoo, it seems like a cool fucking job, you know? but, uh, so after about three years, I'm like, okay, I have to learn how to tattoo, Th that whole time I was getting pretty heavily covered, so I had full sleeves, a full back piece before I was tattooing, and, uh, and just over those three years, as time went on, you know, I just kept wanting more and more to learn how to tattoo. And then, so after three years, I was like, all right, I have to, you know. So I got an apprenticeship at Eternal, and um, it was a quick three-month apprenticeship. I did six tattoos and started working full-time. Who, uh, who were you apprenticing with? Um, you know, the amazing thing is, you know, I went to Eternal Tattoos, which was like the best shop in Detroit in 1997 when I started. And uh, Tom Renshaw happened to be working there, and he was like, the best portrait artist in the world, you know, in the shop I apprenticed in, you know, so I could really couldn't have learned in a better shop. And, uh, and Tom, I was, uh, I was going in there every night after my day job from like six to nine o'clock at night. And, uh, everybody apprenticed me in the shop and tramps just like tramps, the owner of the shop. And the first day he taught me how to make needles and stuff. And then after that, he's just like, watch the guys work, ask questions, just observe, you know? And so I watched everybody and there's a lot of them.